very interesting signs in a protest site right here on Pennsylvania Avenue in front of the White House. So a number of interesting ideas as to how to have peace in this world, how to live together. Some great editorial comment there on the signs. As I said, I'm here in front of the White House, which is the nerve center for all political activity in this world. The person who lives in that White House is the most powerful leader in all of the world. On this documentary, we're going to answer two questions. First of all, is the United States in Bible prophecy? And secondly, should the question be, has the Lord brought the United States into existence for the purpose of facilitating setting the stage around the world for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled? Hope you can stay with us through this program as we look at these things that are unfolding. For example, we showed you the activities in Europe and the problem with the Islamic immigration into the land, the problems they're causing as they do not want to integrate with the European Union peoples, but instead to set up their own Islamic strongholds all across the 28 nations of the European Union. They're having problems with the financial operation of the EU. That would be the Eurozone. And of course, they're talking about NATO the presence of the United States funding NATO and leading the operation of NATO, which was actually brought into existence for the purpose of protecting European Union member states from Russia. Many leaders in the European Union are suggesting that the EU needs to have their own military and set aside NATO. And then we went into the Middle East. We saw all the activities that are unfolding there, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. By the way, Jesus mentioned that 2,000 years ago in the Olivet Discourse, chapter 24. Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. It's so prevalent in the Middle East. You have the Islamic infighting between the different Islamic countries the Sunnis against the Shiites and what they're doing there. Different countries vying for the leadership of the Islamic world. For example, Saudi Arabia has the two key sacred locations for the Islamic world, Mecca and Medina. Meanwhile, the Ayatollahs and the Supreme Council in Iran want to have that claim to being the headquarters for the Islamic world. They have a desire to develop a nuclear weapon of mass destruction, which many of the Arab and Islamic nations in the Middle East fear if they should attain that possibility of a nuclear weapon of mass destruction. The United States is concerned because the Ayatollahs threaten the United States and Israel, the big Satan and the little Satan, and they say there in Iran they're going to wipe out Israel as if they have never been a nation and their name will be forgotten forever. That's Psalm chapter 83 and verse 4. Well, we see the conflicts going on across the world and at the same time in Israel, there's a lot of things happening. Hamas in the south and Hezbollah and the Islamic activities of the radicals there alongside the Gaza Strip and the location of Hamas in the middle part of the state in Samaria. Uh, that, of course, everything north of Jerusalem and Samaria, south would be Judah. But there in Ramallah, the Palestinian Authority, the legislative body for the Palestinian people, trying to do away with the Jewish state of Israel and establish their state of Palestine. And then you have the president coming along with his peace plan that may divide the city of Jerusalem as the capital city for Israel, the Jewish people, and the capital city at the same time for Palestine and the Palestinian people. The Israelis say no way that will happen because Jerusalem, in their opinion, is not only the political capital of the Jewish state of Israel, it's the spiritual capital and it is the eternal capital of the Jewish people as well. These are events unfolding, and may I just mention the most dynamic indicator that we're living in the last days would be the Jewish people, the religious Jews, preparing to build a temple 
on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. With that background, we're going to now stay here in Washington, visit different locations, talk with very interesting people, and try to gather more information so we can answer those two questions. Is the United States in Bible prophecy, or has God brought America and their governmental operation onto the world scene for the purpose of facilitating, setting the stage for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled? I have a very good friend who used to play NFL football, Paul Blair, who played with the Chicago Bears. He's up in Plymouth, Massachusetts. That's where the Pilgrims landed in 1620. And from that point in time, they brought the Plymouth Plantation as an example of how government, from a biblical perspective, should operate. That was the creation of the government for the United States of America. Going to go up and meet with Paul. He's going to explain how Plymouth and the plantation there, along with the Pilgrims and William Bradford as their leader, did establish a governmental operation based upon biblical principles. We'll be coming back to Washington for the purpose of seeing how that is being played out today and ultimately end up in New York City. There's some prophecy teachers that believe Wall Street in New York City is actually the biblical Babylon as talked about in the book of Revelation chapter 18. I'd like for you to come along with me as we head northeast up to Plymouth, Massachusetts.